Guys, we're talking about something fun today. We're talking about how to actually go ahead and buy tickets, but not just buy tickets. We're talking about how to go ahead and buy tickets and compare prices between different resale markets because it's not always as clear as it may seem. But before we begin, Vladdy over here, he needs an update. 18 home runs because my man here, my man, he cannot stop hitting them home runs. So now that that's done, let's get to it. What's up, guys? Welcome back. My name is Shrez here on Thumbs Up Run, where we talk about buying tickets, selling tickets, and making sure that you have all the fun with those things. Today, we're talking all about how to go ahead and actually buy tickets and compare them between different resale marketplaces. Every resale website, they will apply their fees differently. They all have a different structure, but it all comes down to the same process. If you're looking at a ticket price, can you compare it at that level, or do you need to go a bit further to find out what the actual comparable price is? With all that being said, we're going to talk about all-in pricing versus hidden fees. I know you guys don't like hidden fees. I don't like hidden fees. Nobody likes them hidden fees. So we got to talk about both these things. Then we'll get into comparing actual ticket prices across different platforms. Strap in, stay tuned, get ready. It's going to be a good one. So let's talk fees. Fees are basically how all these different ticket exchanges make their money. When you go in buy a ticket, there will be a ticket price displayed to you. Then you'll go in through the finalization of the checkout process and there may or may not be any fees shown to you as you kind of go through that whole thing. A lot of times as you're moving through the process, you may find that the ticket price that was displayed to you may not actually be the true ticket cost of that actual ticket. And it can be a bit frustrating, a bit annoying, just downright terrible. But we just gotta, we just gotta, we gotta figure out a way to deal with it. And the way to deal with it is being able to compare that price across different platforms. Reason I say this, not every platform displays their tickets the same way. Many of them, not all of them, but many will display their tickets without all in pricing, basically saying, hey, here's the ticket price for the ticket. But then as you move through the checkout process on the back end, then they'll start adding in their fees, you know, the delivery fee and the convenience fee and the download fee and the transfer fee and the fee fee. All these fees, they're just, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Basically, they're there just because they can, essentially. Regardless, that's how many ticket resellers operate. They'll show you a very low base ticket price for the actual ticket up front, but then as you move through the checkout process and get to the very last page, that's where you'll see all the other additional fees kind of waiting for you before you actually you know make that final purchase, making it very difficult to compare tickets across the board. However, on the flip side, there are also other ticket resale marketplaces that will use all-in pricing. StubHub actually used to use all-in pricing a few years back. That was their standard, that was their norm, and they found that tickets did not actually sell as well as they did when they were using, you know, the hidden fee model, which seems to, you know, actually drive a lot more sales because the ticket price that's displayed looks a lot cheaper. In the end, the actual cost to buy that ticket is the same across the board between all these different sites, but it can be displayed differently and that may potentially drive someone to finish that purchase. They may not be happy at the end of it, but by the time they've gone through the checkout process and they've gone to two, three, four different levels of stages before they actually see that final price, they've, they've just basically, they've been wound down, they've been, you know, they've been worked to the ground, and they've said, oh, you know, I, I can't do this again. I'm just gonna buy it, I don't care. I'm not gonna look around anymore. Now, there are other resale websites that currently do allow for all-in pricing. Some have it built into the actual model that they use, where all the prices displayed are all-in pricing, while others who allow you to simply hit a checkbox that says what is the total cost inclusive of all other fees, taxes, and things of that nature. And again, because of this difference between these different marketplaces, when you look at a ticket on an all-in pricing model, it may seem more expensive, but in the end, it's possible that it's actually cheaper than going through the finalization process of another ticket resale website. Now that you guys understand the difference between all-in pricing and hidden fee models, let's go into an example of how to actually go ahead and compare those ticket prices to make sure that you guys get the best deal. All right, so handy dandy phone is over here. Follow along, we got a lot of good things to go through. So let's start with SeatGeek just because I can. So we're going up our friend here, Mr. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. We want to go see him play. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to search for Toronto Blue Jays. And I'm going to look at June 10th. This game says free t-shirt. Everybody loves them free t-shirts. So let's get some more free t-shirts. This free t-shirt, extra large, but free. So you, you take what you can, right? We're now here. I'm looking at the very, very, very cheapest ticket that is available here. $9. Section 512, row 7. $9 sounds like a great price. I don't want to pay nine bucks. I'll get into the game. It's going to be great. So I'm going to go ahead, click it, get through the actual process, see what the, the, the true cost is, though, of these tickets. Because I have a feeling this $9, it ain't no $9 ticket. 
And like I said, they have all these different stages to kind of wear you down so that once you get to that final checkout process, you, you just feel too worn down, you feel too stressed, you feel too, you know, just, it's just too much work, having to turn all this information in, and you just kind of want to get this over and done with. So once we hit that review button, here's what we're left with. We're left with some tickets that were $9, but then there's fees of $9.68 per ticket. So that $9 ticket is now actually an $18 ticket. 100% fees on top of that ticket cost. I understand fees may be a bit skewed in this example just because the ticket price cost is so low and some of these standard fees, they are just, they're just a certain flat number, whether it's like a delivery fee of five bucks or whatever the case may be. Point being, that $9 ticket is actually now an $18 ticket. All in, $37.36 for that pair of seats. Not a, not a great feeling when you go in thinking it's going to be eighteen dollars when you're when you're buying the ticket. Come out at the end, you're looking at a doubled price ticket. Not exactly giving you that warm and fuzzies right on the inside. So with that being said, now let's uh, let's let's take a look. So SeatGeek, they are currently using the uh, the hidden fee model. Fine. Take that nugget, put it in the back of your brain. Let's jump on over into the next place. Let's take a look at TickPick. Let's go over to TickPick and do the same thing. Let's go check out our friend. And we're going to take a look at that same event and we're going to look at that exact same seat. Seats that are displayed across the board in different resale exchanges generally means, not always, but generally will mean that it is being sold by a ticket reseller, someone who has access to basically a system which lets them post their tickets across multiple websites. So this way they can get their ticket displayed to as many people as possible, trying to basically get that sale to happen a bit faster. If you guys are actually interested in learning more on how tickets are displayed across different exchanges, just uh, drop a comment, let me know, and uh, maybe we can, uh, we can make that happen. Now that we're here though, we're gonna have to find that same seat. So we're looking for a section 512, row seven. So let's just zoom in, do, 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 512, row seven. And now on TickPick, it said $15 a ticket. Let's dive in, see if it's actually that $15 ticket price. So as you get here, as we get to the actual checkout page, the total price they're showing $30. This is a good sign. So let me click that show order details, see if it shows me anything there. Look at that, the breakdown is as follows. Price, $15 per ticket. Quantity, two. Delivery fee, zero. Service fees, zero. Tick pick total price in US dollars, 30 bucks. So tick pick, as I mentioned, they use an all in pricing model. So any ticket fees that are associated with that sale, they're all on the back end. The buyer doesn't actually see anything. They're just going in, they're seeing a final ticket price and that's what it is to them. When they go in, they see that price, they know exactly what they're gonna pay. In the end, this is coming out to $30. Compared to SeatGeek, $39.37, whatever the case may be over there, you're saving $9 on that order. It's important to note that if you're looking at these ticket prices just on the surface level, SeatGeek would say, hey, I got a $9 ticket for you. Come buy it over here. Come, come. I, I got the goods. And the ticket's like, no, 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 15. It's only 15. And you don't hear them because you're like, oh, no, 9 is way better than 15. That's much cheaper. I'm going to go buy tickets over there. And then you get to the end and you realize it's actually, you know, $18 ticket, tick pick selling it for $15 a ticket. And uh, now you're a loser because you bought that ticket over at SeatGeek. Now I do need to mention, this is not always the case that tick pick will be cheaper than SeatGeek and vice versa. Every single event, every ticket is different. It is not the same across the board where all in pricing will be cheaper than a hidden fee model. Ticket sellers who are listing their tickets, they can price their tickets differently across the board. So if they're listing on one exchange, they could have it at a price of $15. They could list it on a different exchange, have it at a price of $18. List it on a different exchange, have it at a price of $47. It really depends, it really varies. So every single event is different. Fee structures change from time to time as well. So you cannot just rely on using one website to buy your tickets, unless you just, for whatever reason, have a favorite, don't wanna move across anywhere else, and you just wanna make all your purchases on one place. But as you can see in this specific example, TickPick is the cheaper option, $30 versus 39. So if you're gonna buy them, you'd be leaning towards buying them on TickPick. Now let's go check one more place, StubHub. Let's see what they've got going on. Okay, so StubHub, same thing. Let's look for our Toronto Blue Jays. So we'll jump in there, look for June 10th, 512 row seven. Let's find out where that is. Let's take a look. There it is, 512 row seven, $12 ticket. Okay, interesting. So if you just take a quick look at it, this this looks much cheaper than, uh, than TickPick, does it not? $12 a ticket, $24 total. TickPick was charging us 30 bucks. SeatGeek was charging us $39. Let's go check out and take a look, shall we? And look at that. 
total order price is actually $33.22. So if you had gone over to SeatGeek initially to go buy those tickets, you would have paid $39. If you went over to StubHub, you would have only paid $33. So you'd be like, oh, yes, I did it. I saved myself $6. That's fantastic, wonderful, excellent. But if you went that one step further to check another site, you could go ahead and potentially save even more. Now, there is a certain level of, you know, there's a certain point where there's like diminishing returns, you know, the amount of time you're spending to find that perfect ticket at the perfect price, the cheapest you can possibly find. There is a limit to how far you can actually go on that, unfortunately. So we don't have unlimited time. And because these tickets are live across all these different platforms, they may not be available all the time. They may end up getting sold while you're doing your research. So at some point, you do need to make a decision. How much are you actually willing to spend? And how much time are you willing to put in to find the cheapest ticket possible? So if you just said the first place I'm gonna look, that's where I'm gonna buy my ticket. So then you know what? You pick your favorite resale website, you go in, you buy the ticket, la di da, life is fantastic. If you want to spend a little bit of time, check between two resale marketplaces. You know, just to give yourself an idea, like are you paying too much? So then you know what? You start at StubHub, you see the price there, you jump over to SeatGeek, check the price there, you realize, hey, cheaper over here, I'm just gonna go ahead, buy that ticket. If you're the kind of person though who wants to save the most amount of money, I got two suggestions for you. One, check out, you know, three, four, five different websites. Just get an idea of what the fee structures are across the board. And two, before you make any final purchase, make sure you sign up for Rakuten. Basically, Rakuten is a cashback website. Anytime you're going in to buy tickets, I like to use Rakuten first because they usually have cashback options available on all of these different ticket resale marketplaces. StubHub usually one to 2%, Ticketmaster is a couple percent. All these different resale websites, many times they do have some level of cashback going on. But if you're gonna go in and actually make that purchase, if you're happy with where you wanna buy those tickets from, always jump over to Rakuten first, see if they're an eligible website to go ahead and get that cash back, and then you'll save you know, another one to 2%. What's wrong there? Nothing. So go ahead, save that free money. Everybody loves free money. I got a link down in the description below if you are interested in signing up, you'll get a little bonus as well if it's your first time. So everybody wins. Don't just settle for the first place you look. Do a little bit of digging. Obviously, if you don't have the time, so be it, then just go ahead make that purchase. But if you are gonna make that purchase, do use Rakuten as well, save yourself a little bit of money. And if you have the time to go ahead, search between different resale websites, do that first before you make any final decisions. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely let me know by hitting that like button down below. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Great new content coming out every single week. And see you guys next time.